Greetings and welcome to the arcade. This is episode 48, the Omega Race Monitor Repair. This episode is arcade vlog number three and we will give you an update of my recent arcade activities. All right, let's get this started. All right, everybody. So today's fix is Omega Race. And as you can see, I am missing the top left and right portions of the black and white vector monitor. The bottom, the bottom portions are still displayed. So what I am, what I am um, thinking that is going on here is that the transistors, there's two transistors that are probably out on this one. So what we're going to do is pull the monitor and we're going to do a test on the transistors. And we're going to see if we can get the Omega Race functional again. All right, so I'm going to take the back door off. And it actually shuts the game off. The, um, the interlock switch, the, once you take the door off, on the Omega Race, the interlock switch actually shuts the game down. So what we need to do is take the boards out and take the monitor out so we can do our test. And let me swing around front here. I took the monitor glass off. The next step for this process is we are going to test. This is what I am suspecting is the issue right now with the vector monitor. These transistors that are mounted on the frame are known to fail um, frequently. So I am going to pull those from the monitor and I'm going to conduct some tests. I actually have brand new replacement transistors that I've tested and they all test good. So my, my hope is that we can get this Omega Race operational and back in the lineup. Okay, so... I put brand new transistors on each four of the spots on the side of the frame. And what I like to do is I like to take a Sharpie and I like to mark the transistor type right there on the side so that I can quickly identify them or in case I get in trouble um, that I don't forget. So each transistor definitely does a different function. The um, and you actually can you actually test them a little differently. So I have a love-hate relationship with vector games. I, I love, I absolutely love them. They're beautiful when they work. But in my entire, in the entire span of me being in this hobby, I have struggled getting them fixed. So let's keep our fingers crossed and uh, let's see if this will fix the Omega Race. If not, I will have to go back to the drawing board and maybe even do a, an entire cap kit on the deflection board and the high voltage cage. So we put the monitor back in place. We've got it all fired up and let's walk over and see if we have a victory here. Aha, we have victory. Hot dog. So just as I suspected the transistors was causing the loss of um, picture in one of the quadrants. So we got ourselves a working Omega race once again. So let's have a look. <laughs> Some adjustments on the monitor a little bit um, but yeah we got a working Omega race let's fire up a game of Omega race I'm gonna hit the one player button 
And the gameplay is very similar to Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe. I do believe it's Valley Midway's only vector game that they created. And it in direct co competition with Atari's Asteroids, which was a huge hit for Atari. Um, there's multiple bad guys that you can attack here. There's the, um, there's the ovals, the empty ovals, there's the triangles, there's the ovals with the triangles, and then there's the, um, the ovals with the triangles morph into, they'll morph into a uh, faster enemy. So yeah, the, uh, the block in the middle is, it, it's where the high score is displayed and the last quarter's score is displayed. And it also shows your, um, how many guys you have left. But yeah, that, it's, uh, the buttons are a thrust and fire. And this game is really very addicting. There's that, there's that fifth bad guy where he morphs from, he morphs from the triangle. Oh. And as you can see on the, um, like asteroids, you could actually go up and down the screen. This one, you're contained into a box, so you cannot go off screen. You literally have to stay within the confines of the Omega Race field. I, I really think this is just a fantastic game, and, and a lot of these games, a lot of these games um, never survive for collectors because the acid damage is so horrible on the uh, PCBs. I don't really remember what my high score is on Omega Race. Uh, it's definitely a game I'm gonna, whenever I come to fire up the arcade, it's a game I definitely love to play. There's a, um, Valley Midway made this in, um, four versions. There's the upright, which is, that's what this is, dedicated upright. There's a cabaret version, which I owned at one time. Here's a, here's a picture of my cabaret version. There is a cockpit version and a, and a cocktail version, so. And... It's got a high score. Um, it's got a high score save. Or it, it used to have a high score save with the battery, but now it doesn't. I, I'm going to look into seeing if I can actually put a high score battery on there that won't leak acid. But yeah, there you go. Omega Race. Good morning, everybody. We are on a mission today, this Saturday. Saturday mornings is when I do a little arcade activity before everybody wakes up. And uh, what you get yourself into, it's chaos. So what I had this garage all squared away and playable, pole position went down, and I've been in a mad dash to either replace the monitor or fix the monitor. So as you can see here, Pole position is sitting here in pieces. I've got sometimes to get to the monitor, you have to take a lot of stuff off. So for Atari's pole position, you got to pull off the bezel. You have to pull the back door off, of course. You have to take certain things off of the monitor, which is no problem. And let me show you. It's like I said, it's chaos. Um, I've got these Wells Garner 4900s, and each one of them has a little problem on them. One, one uh, deflection board has a vertical pot problem, and couldn't fix that one. And this one's got so much Crystal Castle's monitor burn that I don't really think I can use that. And the parts on it, it needs capped. So those are out for now. Ladybug is in parts. I've got a chassis coming for the monitor, which is a bizarre monitor. Neo Geo is a new project that I've got sitting there. 
And as you can see, there are two 25 inch monitors over there. One's a Wells Garner and one's a Mac Vision. So I'm hoping to have that one up and running sometime in the next month. The Omega race is working, but the problem is where the hell am I gonna put the game? Uh, we're a little packed in here, very packed. I don't know where it's gonna go. We're gonna have to figure that out, but uh, that's, that's kind of what it's like in this hobby. This hobby is, um, if you can't fix games, don't get in the hobby. I think um, it's, it's really, I gotta be honest with you, it's one of my favorite parts of this hobby. I can tell you, I love taking stuff apart and I love fixing the games. Now, I'm not always successful at it, but I love doing it. Here's some cool Atari tags for the pole position. But yeah, I love the games and uh, I consider myself a protector of these beautiful games, even when family and friends just don't get it. So <laughs> that's not for them to get, it's for me to get. So it is absolute chaos. We've got some broken games, including the pole position. And right now I'm trying to find a monitor that's um, in my stockpile of parts. I'm trying to find something that works. This monitor works, but there's a vertical issue with it. So I'm actually gonna swap out this G07 chassis with this one. And hopefully we're gonna get this back to normal. Um, if you can see, we just have a sea of chaos here in GarageCade. And something, something um, kind of crappy about this ladybug is it stinks. This game, this game just stinks. It's a great looking game and I cleaned it, but it just smells like mouse urine. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. Um, I'm, I'm even thinking about replacing the shelf. I got some baking, baking soda on there to see if I can extract out the, the smell. And uh, got the, uh, as you saw here earlier in this video, I've got the Omega Race functional. But the uh, problem is I don't know where I'm gonna put it. So sometimes you can have too much stuff and it really kind of hinders what you're trying to do. And um, so let's, uh, let's see if we can get this pole position operational. Well, we're having some uh, very bad luck with monitors. This one, I could not get adjusted. There is adjustment pots right down there. If you can see, you can't really see them here. There's some adjustment pots right down there on the monitor. And I am really struggling with the, uh, the hold on this one. I couldn't get it adjusted correctly. So just having some bad luck. So I've got this monitor here, which is a Geo. No, no, I'm sorry. This is actually a Wells Garner 4900. So I'm going to see if this works. This chassis is bad. Um, obviously this chassis here is bad. So I'm going to do a final, I'm gonna plug this 4900 in and see what's, uh, what happens. Good news, bad news here. Um, I literally found a Wells Garner 4900 monitor that works, but it's so bad. There's a Super Pac-Man screen burn on it and it really needs a cap kit because none of the adjustments are working vertically. So um, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna go with the uh, Wells Garner 4900 for this. I really love that monitor. And um, what I need to do is order some parts. Let me show you back here. Yeah, just, here's some, um, you can see down there at the bottom, these little white, little white area there. Those little pots are the vertical adjustment pots. And once I get that, once I get the cap kit on, this will be a nice monitor. But like I said, there's a lot of um, super pack screen burn on it. So 
Okay, well, monitor woes continue, but it's all a part of the hobby, so... We're gonna... For now, I'm gonna put the... I might put this monitor in just for... Just temporarily, even though it's in bad shape, and then I might... Um, I'm gonna get the uh, arcade organized somewhat. All right, let's make our way out to Garage Cade and check it out. I was able to piece the uh, Garage Cade back together after a couple of weeks of arcade chaos. Um, I took the pole position apart to try to fix the monitor and I've got some parts on order, so pole position is going to have to wait for repairs. But as you can see, I was actually able to insert the Omega Race into this row here. So you got Omega Race, Sinistar, Berserk, pole position, and I moved Asteroids down a little bit. Yeah, pretty cool row. Pretty cool row of games here. So the other big thing, the other big thing I did, let me show you. Um... Two years ago, I actually, my friend Shep Dog has helped me install the power grid here. He helped me put the 100 amp service out here, and I did all the outlets and all that, and uh, I kind of got a little lazy and didn't finish a couple of the outlets on the one breaker, so I was able to, I was successful in installing the remainder of the 20 amp outlets. So now I have more um, room to power on more games here in the arcade safely without breaking any or you know blowing any fuses. So let's uh, fire up the games. I'm gonna turn on that first one is for the bank of games against the wall and this one is for the f multiple games, the five games right now on this wall. And the new one, and the new one is this one, which we, we had it wired up, but now we've got it wired up over on the other side. So this lets us actually turn the games on in the center of Garage Cade. So now we've got more power options and pretty excited about that. And I think we have uh, something, a new development. We have the Berserk. Seems to have a problem booting. So, hold on. All right, Berserk, Berserk finally booted up. That was a little weird. I'm going to have to figure out what's going on. Might have a voltage issue there. But, uh, yeah, so pretty cool. We've got the uh, games playable here in the center. And got Omega Race in its position. I got Cubert running really well. And as you can see, you might notice uh, you might notice a different game in this row. I actually I have Robotron up and operational. So I am going to um, show you more about Robotron in an upcoming video and how I got it working. Space Duel, Arkanoid, Assault. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Now that I've got the, uh, now that I've got the game powered on, I am going to fire up the lights. And I'm going to turn off the main lights. And there we go. Our, um, the arcade is lit so to speak. So that's pretty cool stuff. So let's take a look here. What kind of progress am I making on Berserk? Not very good. 4,660 is all I can manage right now on Berserk. So definitely going to do some more gameplay uh, videos here at Arcade Hollywood. So messing around the arcade a little this evening as part of this update. I was able to bust out 
139,100 on my Omega race. So I'm gonna keep track of this stuff. I think Omega race is a blast. Gotta see what else, what else is going on here. So like I said, I actually got the Robotron running and the best score I could crank out on Robotron right now is 123,000. I could not get the 151 that Willie Electric's got, so. Definitely gonna play more Robotron in the future and see how good I can get on this game. Boy, this is hard. Yeah, you know, and something else that I might have mentioned in the last episode, I am gonna do a really cool um, gameplay comparison between Space Duel, Atari Space Duel, and Geometry Wars for my Xbox 360. So that's not, kind of cool. That's actually something I haven't done. Um, but I've been thinking about that and how cool Geometry Wars is and how it compares to Space Duel a little bit. Look what I've got sitting here. And if you've seen any of my past few episodes, you have noticed that I picked the Ladybug up from Tennessee. Thanks to Chris down there. It was really great to meet Chris. And um, I've actually got this game cleaned out really well. I'm going to do some additional work on it as soon as the weather permits. And I, you can see a bunch of other stuff going on over here. ZVS is working. I'm just uh, trying to figure out where I'm going to put ZVS. Missile Command has that monitor problem. Um, let me talk about something else here that's going on in the arcade. Donkey Kong Jr. The reason why I haven't actually been going at, going at it at, on Donkey Kong Jr. is the monitor needs capped. You, can you see the roll on the left? Right there. You can see it's starting to roll a little bit, which needs the monitor needs capped. So I'm um, going to try to do It's going to rain this weekend, so this might be a good candidate for this weekend. Good news for the Cubert. Ever since I put that filter board on, this thing has run... Amazingly, this has been really great, a great working game ever since I um, replaced the filter board. So, all right, everybody. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Arcade Hollywood. Major shout out to Stephen Gregory at Arcade Shop. That is where I get a lot of my arcade parts. Please visit www.arcadeshop.com. I will post a link to the page below. Once again, wanted to give a huge shout out to my good friend Mike Miller and his band Origami for providing me with all the amazing music for this channel. You can check him out at origami.tumblr.com. Coming soon to Arcade Hollywood, we will revisit some additional footage from Pinball PA with Warren and Ed. We will also have the Atari Space Duel Xbox 360 Geometry Wars gameplay episode. And we will have more arcade vlog updates. This is a great time to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget you can check me out on Twitter, Arcade Hollywood at Hollywood Arcade. We are also out there on Facebook and Google+. Please email me with any comments or questions at discohollywood1 at gmail.com. All right, this does it for another episode of Arcade Hollywood. Until next time, rock on.